Hey guys, it's Robin R. Silent Crafts and welcome to my studio. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a perfect patchwork block. We're going to be using this two inch quilt fuse, fusible non-woven layout grid. Really, all those fancy words just means that it's a piece of interfacing and it's got the grids already printed on it for you. I had a partial charm pack of Moda Nostalgia by April Cornell. So I thought I'd go ahead and use that just to make a little block here. It's, I think it's gonna be about eight and a half inch square. So I've been cutting these up into two inch squares. So let me show you how to cut this out and we'll chat along the way and I'll give you some tips and tricks as we go. So when you go to purchase this quilt fuse, now this one I believe it's made by a specific company and that's why it's called a quilt fuse. I've seen a bunch of videos that I've been watching online and when you purchase it from quilt shops, sometimes they'll call it after the quilt shop's name. Like they'll say Robin's a fusible grid or Robin's a quilt grid or something like that. So they do have a few different names, but if you just search online for a, a fusible quilt grid, or a interfacing with a fusible interfacing with a grid somewhere along those lines they're really easy to find they pop up everywhere i'll put a link to one down below on amazon now you can buy it by a package so if you only need a small amount you can go ahead and do that or you can go ahead and buy it by the yardage and this is just called quilt fuse so it's the same thing it's just like you can buy interfacing and and heat and bond they have them in small packages and they have them by the yardage so it's going to be the same thing it's going to tell you what size grid it is this is a two inch grid but just because it's a two inch square we can use it for other things now to match my other piece i did a five by five piece that i cut out now the reason i went with the five by five grid just because i had this little weird chunk sitting here and it was actually 10 by five so if i can cut it out by two sections that worked for me. I don't have an actual project in mind for it. Let me move this so it's easier to see. You can cut it with your rotary cutter, but I find it easier to see if I don't have a mat underneath with all of the grid lines competing for these grid lines. So I'm just gonna count and see what I have. So I have one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So there's my five by five grid. So if you need to cut anywhere, and I'm just gonna cut directly on this line. Again, you can use the rotary cutter if you want. But it's not hard to cut through at all. If you've used interfacing, it really, it is just interfacing that's been run through a printer and had the lines put on it. It feels exactly the same, it behaves the same. Now this piece, it's kind of folded up here. It's got some crinkles and stuff like that. I didn't worry about that. I had the same issues with the other piece. I just worked around it. I would imagine if it's a bit of a really scrunch up mess, what you can do is you can use a Teflon pressing sheet. This one's a Fonz and Porter one that I picked up at Joann's. Really all it is is a baking sheet. These are just a little bit thin so you can see through to do your applique. What happens is when you use this to iron, nothing sticks to it. So if you're finding that this has got a lot of crinkles, that's going to cause an issue and not get your project done properly. This side, you can tell the which side is which because this side with the printing on it is really smooth and we're gonna be sewing from this side. We are going to put our fabric down on this side where you see all the little, little white dots there? Those are all dots of glue. So if you needed to iron this out to get it to be able to use it, what you can do is you put a glue size down on your Teflon sheet, do a very light, light press of wherever you need to get the wrinkles out, but for the most part, you should be able to just use it as is. I have glass head pins here that I use. What I was doing is also I have a fan that's always blowing in here because it's always hot in this room. I put it so that it is fusible side up and that, now with my wool mat, it does stick nicely. But to make sure that all of those creases stay out and that there's no issues, I went ahead with my little glass pin. So if I hit them with an iron, it wouldn't melt. I just put them a little bit diagonally in the corner, just enough to grab each corner. And I put diagonally so that the pin, the heads would stay out of the way. And this would just give it that nice little bit of tension. Now you see, I'm not really stretching and tugging or anything. I'm just getting it to kind of lay down so that I don't have to worry about any of those weird creases. Maybe this fold here is bothering you. You can always put a couple extra pins over here. As we get going, you can remove them or you can iron. I can put my iron right up onto this part here. Now I've got the two inch grid. I'm just going to put two inch squares down. 
but you could also put a four inch square. So if you had one piece and you wanted a specific center piece or something and you're working away around it and you wanted to use all the same fabric, I know that these are all different fabrics, but you could just put one four piece down there so that this would be the whole entire fabric right there. And then you can just put your two inch squares around. Maybe if you're going to be doing a larger piece and you're going to be turning it into a wall hanging or you're going to do large sections and then sew them all together to make a quilt. See, then you might want to use your four inch piece of fabric there, another four inch square there and just kind of make it around and then add in your little two inch squares all the way around. If you're very careful, you can also use one inch squares because you can put four of them within this square right here. And if you just line it up against your little dotted lines here, they're a little bit hard to see on camera, but now you see how I can get it really close and you just see that shadow of the dots right there. When you're working on it in person, you can see these lines a lot easier, but you can just put your one inch, one inch, one inch, one inch. And then when you sew it, the only thing different with that is when you're using the one inch ones, instead of just sewing on the line here, you would also have to sew in between. So I find it easier just to go ahead and use the two inch squares. Majority of the videos I watched, they either went with the two inch squares or the four inch ones. Then you just take your fabrics and you're going to put them right side up so that you can look at your block and see exactly how it's gonna look. And then you just pop them down if you have a pattern. If you're doing a trip around the world, this is a really good tip and trick to do the trick around the trip around the world. That way you can lay out your colors and you can do, cause it has that like of a diamond and just the way the colors are all stepping and stuff. It's a really easy way to work on a project using this. You can line up all your colors exactly where you want them. Now on these outer ones, it seems on the outside edges of this interfacing, there's a little bit extra. Can you see that little bit right up there? I'm lining all of my squares up on the lines. I'm not lining it up against the edge. So that way, whatever extra there is, there's extra. I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm just gonna make sure all of my squares are lined up at the two corners down there. And that extra little bit, I'll just trim off afterwards. After you get these all laid out, you can go ahead and remove them and move them around because we haven't ironed it yet. These aren't going to be exactly where they are until we give it a good pressing with the iron. This being a charm square, it does have all of the little serrated edges along there. I just, if I'm a little concerned about whether it's an exact lined up or not, as long as it's in the square, I'm okay. But I try to take my cut edges then. And I can just line those up to make sure they're sitting within that grid work. You do a little scooching over on some because you do have that little extra space. Make sure everybody stays within their own little square. If for some reason the way yours was cut, if you bought it by the yard and there was like, you had three quarters of a square down here, but there was all the part on the right was missing. As long as you have enough to fuse this one section down, I would say maybe even just a quarter of it three quarters of an inch up to an inch, something just to where you can fuse that square down so it's gonna stay in place. It's okay, you don't have to have the fusible underneath every single bit, but as long as something is fused down to hold your square in place, you'll be okay. As we know when you pick up things at the store, they're always not cut exactly perfect when you're buying yardage. I'm gonna go ahead and just speed this up so you guys don't have to sit here and watch this. After you have them all where you want them, if you want to move anyone around, you can always shift them now. So you didn't want to have these two together, you can always move them. Now what I notice, especially with the little zigzag cut on the charm pack, you're going to see some of the interfacing through there. Several of the videos I watched, they recommend that you put your pressing mat down again like this and they give it a good press. And that's just going to guarantee you that you're not going to get any of that sticky residue on your iron. Of course, always follow the directions that come on your product. I have a nice hot iron at the cotton setting and I do have the steam on. I'm going to avoid this area up there. And you set your iron down and you just hold it firmly for the five or 10 seconds, whichever your directions say, lift it up. We are definitely not gonna go like this because that's gonna take all of our pieces and just rush them all over the place and make a big mess. 
Once you have them sticking just enough to hold it, I'm gonna take out my pins. I'm just gonna take this and trim this off with the scissors, just the interfacing and not the fabric, because you know I'm gonna stick my iron on it. Now, while I don't worry about my iron too much, I do worry about my nice wool pressing mat. So I will put down my sheet. You can also use, so you can always lay down a piece of parchment paper if you don't have any of this or a brown paper bag or just something to protect your mat and your iron. Then I'm gonna give it another good press, give it some steam. I wanna make sure these are all going to stick really well. Show you what it looks like if we put the mat on this side. Now with the mat on it, it's really easy to glide because I've already got everything all pressed down nice. So I can just let it kind of, I still don't want to scrub it. I do notice that if I have the steam on with these mats, it does get some water bubbling up and it will make my iron glide on its own. And I don't stay in one place for very long. Remember, I do use this for my appliques and stuff, so I can already see some of the glue that was on it from before when I didn't clean it very well, which is another reason why I don't do that. This is usually just fine for me. A couple presses, I like to press from the front and then from the back and then the front again, make sure it's nice and steamy. And ultimately what you want is for everything to be nicely stuck in place so that when you pick it up, nothing falls off. See, nothing falls off. Everything is nicely done and in place. So the whole exciting part about this and what makes it great is you take this and you could start doing it from top to bottom or left to right. I don't know why, but I just like to do the sides and then I do it in the other direction. But I take one side and I fold it onto the other and we're folding it right on that line. Some people say you should go ahead and give it a nice press. I find it hard to press from the interfacing side. I always like to press from the other side when I'm making bags and everything, but you give yourself that nice crease. So if one of your squares went just a little bit over and into that little area, it's gonna fold it and it's gonna be good. Now, another thing that this is really great for is if you're a beginner or even if you're seasoned like me and you've been doing, you've been quilting for over 10 years, if your quarter inch isn't perfect and dead on, if you struggle with making your star points show up or if your flying geese lose the tip, this is a great project for you. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the same stitch length. We're gonna aim for our quarter inch because that's what these are made for. And we're gonna line this up on our presser foot wherever our quarter inch is. On my Juki, it's on the side of the presser foot. And on my little brother, it's on the inside of the presser foot. So if you line it up wherever you need to to get your quarter inch, and you're gonna stitch down here. Then we're gonna take this and open it back up. You can bring it back over. We can iron all of these at once if we'd like. Give these all a nice press before we go over. Don't worry, I will take you to the sewing machine just in a moment. Just wanna get these. I find that you can give them a nice good press and they'll show you that nice line to sew on really easily. Some people put clips on it still. Some people put pins. It's technically a pin-free project, but if pins help you, then I don't see the problem with using them. It's not gonna hurt anything. So I have all these pressed nicely. Now let's go over to the sewing machine and we'll start stitching on them. Now you can use whichever color thread is going to work for your project. I'm using white for mine. I'm sticking with my 2.0 inch stitch length. I did notice that in a lot of the directions that that's what they suggest to use. Quarter inch, now for me, on my presser foot here, I have this line on the side. Then there's the foot of it right here and a little line right there. And if I follow along this foot and right along that line in that general area, that's gonna give me a quarter inch on this sewing machine. Every sewing machine is just a little bit different depending on the foot and the way everything is set up and how it is. So find where it is on yours. And again, as long as you use the same your quarter inch is what a lot of people call it. As long as you use your quarter inch on every bit of this so that all the seams are the same, it's going to turn out for you. Maybe yours is an eighth of an inch smaller than mine or an eighth of an inch bigger, or it could be perfectly set on there. 
When you go to put it together in a quilt, as long as all of the pieces are the same, it will come out to be the same. Now I have my little scrap piece of fabric that was already underneath my foot. I keep a little pile next to my machine. That just allows me to start right off without having to pull out that piece of thread and holding that. It doesn't get sucked down into the machine. It's a form of chain piecing. So when I'm done for the day, I just throw one of these underneath it and I'm ready for my next day of sewing. So I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna sew wherever my quarter inch is. They said you could put little pins in through here if you'd like. Some people like to backstitch at the beginning and the end. It's got the interfacing and everything like that. And I wouldn't backstitch if I were making like a nine patch or something. So I don't backstitch here. I just stick another piece of scrap fabric under it. And I trim this one off. And you see, I'm not wasting any thread that way. I'm not pulling any out. If I was doing several of these blocks, if I wanted to have a variety of nine patches, maybe I wanted to have one with red and one with green, one with blue, I can just go ahead and get all the pressing done and then just chain piece them through. So I'm going to continue this all the way over to the end. See, I have that bit of an accordion fold looking thing to it. So I have all of these seams done. Now, some people will take it and just fold it over in the other direction. So this one we did top to bottom, right to left. So then you can either turn it if that's the way you like to work or just go like this way and we're gonna fold it down. But now that's gonna give you your seams. And when we do patchwork, we generally nest our seams and have them pressed in alternate directions just to avoid all that bulk. Now to do that on these, Take something that has your scissors a really nice sharp point at the top. If your scissors are sharp down here, it's not gonna help you. You can still do it, but it's a lot easier if you have some type of scissors that are really sharp at the tip. Sometimes little embroidery scissors work really well for this. And what we're gonna do, wherever we see our intersection where we're gonna fold it in the other directions, our dotted line, we're gonna snip right on that line in between the two squares. Now we're not gonna snip through our sewing line. I watched one video where it said it was okay to snip through it, but I don't agree. So I would just go ahead and snip it just right up to the line. So then here's my line, there's my two blocks, and I'm just gonna snip it, being careful that I stay away from the stitches. I won't, I'll just go right up to them and snip it. And you see how that allows us to bend this in either direction? And you're gonna to wanna to do that through each of the sections. Now this does take a little bit of time, especially if you're doing an entire quilt. Just make sure nothing else is in the way when you're snipping it. But it's one of those things that it just makes it lay nicer, lay flatter, it gives it a better look to the block. And if our blocks are gonna turn out perfect, then I don't mind taking that little bit of time to snip on through here. It's not as bad as if we were making a rag quilt. So I think this is okay. Now, if you want, you could press these before you snip them. Doesn't really matter too much. See, and I always find, I have, this is where I have a hard time because the iron doesn't glide easily on the interfacing, but I'm gonna go ahead and press it this way. And I'm gonna double check from the front just to make sure I don't get any tucks. And I'm gonna give it a nice press from here because this side is a lot easier to press from. We have that interfacing back there, so it's gonna hold things and stabilize any type of bias that we may have. So this time I don't mind ironing it versus pressing it because everything is nice and secure. We have to alternate which way our seams go. You can go and do one row at a time individually, or what, I liked, what I've been doing is I've been pressing the entire thing so that this row is going to go down. So I want this row to go up. So I fold this one down and underneath and out of the way. And then I can press this one up. Then I'll take it at this spot and I'll fold it so that's only one layer underneath. So I have these two there. 
So this one's down, this one's up. So this one's down, we've already done that. We can skip that. This one needs to go up. So I will fold that underneath. This also gives me that nice little crease on the edge. And my last one's done. So now we have them so that they're alternating. Maybe using the little palm iron might be a little bit easier for this. So we'll take it back to the sewing machine. And when we put it through, what we wanna do is we wanna make sure as we're putting it through that we have one seam going one way and one going the other. You can do it right at the machine and fold them, or you can just make sure they're done ahead of time and put some clips on it. You can put pins if you prefer pins. This is going to hold it down. And it's it's gonna take a little bit, right? It took you a few seconds to do this. But when you're at the machine, every time you get to the intersection, you gotta stop and make sure it's flipped. Stop and make sure it's flipped. So no matter how you do it, if you put it this way, your bottom is facing up. If we flip it this way, then we have the bottom facing up. So I find it easier just to go ahead and put the clips on and I can remove these. And as I'm sewing, I'll go ahead and flip the next one, put the clips back on. Otherwise I have to stop at each square. Personal preference, whatever one you prefer. I'm still sticking with the same quarter inch that I'd been doing. Get started. And then when I get close, because it seems right through here, a lot of times on the machines it gets hooked up on this when you have the, whether it's your full plate or for my bobbin, it just seems to get hooked up and it flips all the seams. See, I didn't have to nest the seams. I know they're all going to be perfect right through there. You can feel them. Sometimes this part of it will flip underneath, but as long as this part here is down, you're okay. So there's the first one, and you can already see how everything is lining up so beautifully through there. Now I'll just take this next one and I will fold it down. Make sure I'm gonna follow my seam here, this one. These all go up and these all go down. Make sure nobody gets twisted. And then I will sew the seam again. You can make sure everything's lined up along the top. If you're going like this and you know you're not getting the seam right, so you make sure everything's lined up at the top and you'll have that nice fold there to go against. So I'm just gonna keep sewing these all the way through and I'll show you what they look like. Let me just show you what it looks like when I have to flip it. So here I am, I'm coming up to it. I have this down, I had to make sure that's flipped up and underneath. So when I come to this one, I gotta leave enough room for my fingers. This is down, I gotta flip that one. You can use a stiletto. Your seam ripper, a double pointed needle, but I have to stop each time. Cause that seam flipped every time. See now my little fabric is just sitting there for my next time when I'm ready to start sewing. Now this one, you can go ahead and just take it and you could press it this way, press it the other way. If you want to press these open, because you have maybe if you want it a lot flatter and it seems a little bit more bulky in areas, there's a couple ways you could do it. You could take a seam ripper. You want to really have a nice new sharp one. You just want to be careful you don't go into your seam. And I've tried it where you put the ball in there and maybe mine's not sharp enough. So I have to go and I put my point in between my two pieces of fabric and we're just gonna slowly go. Now the ball makes it easier so you're not poking out through that way. Oh, there goes mine. So if you, if you can do the ball, put that ball end in first so that way, cause this part keeps wanting to poke out and it just opens up your seam for you so that you can press it open. I did find it a little bit tough at the intersections and to hold this so if you don't want to do that, you just take a pair of scissors. And you want to trim just the very edge off. So you're going to get up, get an easy one, this one here. So you want to just trim a very, very scant, scant little bit. So you're just trimming the tip of it off, that little edge. 
You can put your rotary ruler down and try that, but it gets a little bit off kilter right here. So when you're putting it down with all the seam allowances, and that will also see how we took off just a very, very little sliver. And again, that allows us to press open our seams if we need to. I didn't worry about it too much. Just give it a nice press. You can also go from this side because it's easier for me, I find, to press along the fabric. And I can also see to make sure I'm not getting any tucks. You get it all pressed, give it some nice steam. If you prefer, spritz it with water and use a dry iron. The steam really takes that interfacing and it relaxes it and makes it lay down. So take a look at it. And all of our little points, they're all so nice and perfect. Everything is lined up so nice and neat. When we take our next block and we sew it together, so we can put them like this. And you do the same thing if you wanted to sew these blocks together, you would just put these side by side, just like if you were quilting. And if you can, a lot of times you have your seams nested in the wrong direction. If you don't have a right side and wrong side and you can move it around, you can always flip these around so that your seams nest. And by nesting, it just means that one seam allowance is going up, the other is going down. And when you put it together, this is one of those things where it's hard to explain and a little hard sometimes to understand, but when you do it, you get it. So when we line it up and our seam allowances are going in the wrong direction, it just kind of locks in place because this seam allowance is pushing up against that because you have that extra folded piece of fabric. So this part, this block right here is a little higher than this one because we have that extra seam allowance. Technically they're not, but when you're doing it this way, it kind of feels that way. So you can just nest those all together, all the way down, line them up, take them to the sewing machine, do your quarter inch. And when you bring it open, you will again have that perfect spot right there. So keep making all your blocks and pile them all up, turn them into, now you can take this and turn this into a nine patch. So if you had more of these, if you have eight more to go all the way around, especially if you're doing the color coordinated, or if you have your uh, trip around the world. So there's like the way it crosses and it has like a triangle in the center, Google trip around the world and you'll see how it has all these different pathways. So you'll make one block and then you can put the next one together and you'll be able to see on how they all go together. So if you have a certain design to go, or if you just want to use your scraps, you can just take some time and press these all in. Like it's a rainy day. Like I know down here in Florida, when we have a lot of lightning, the majority of us don't use our sewing machines or other electronic equipment like that. So you can spend a rainy afternoon getting these all pressed. Get your, if you have your squares already cut into two inch strips or two inch squares, you can just have fun laying them down. Make a certain block if you want to make them 12 and a half inches, if you want to make them 15 and a half inches, whatever works for you. You can just keep making them. So I guess it really wouldn't be 15. You gotta, because you're using two inch squares, you're gonna go by twos. So what, 16 and a half inch square? And just keep making them. And when you're all done, you can turn them into a project. If this is the very first time you're gonna make these and you just wanna see how it feels and how it works before you get really into the project, go ahead and just cut out enough for a little nine patch. And that's gonna give you enough just to go across a couple of seams both ways, just to feel how it feels and see how it works and see how it comes out when it's done and how you don't need to trim it up. And then after you get an idea of how it is, you can turn that into a little coaster or a little mug rug and then work on your project. So thank you for hanging out with me while I played with this gridded interfacing. I have several yards of it, so I'm sure we're going to be working on this in future projects. So if you'd like to play along now, or you want to make something of your own, or just have some on hand for the next project, maybe order some online or pick some up at your local quilting store just to have on hand for our next project. So if you have any questions, please leave them down below in the comments, and I'll do the best I can to answer them. Your code word for this week will be square. So we have a whole bunch of squares turning them into a square, and eventually they will turn into a quilt or some other project. So thanks for hanging out with me, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!